All right, fam. So we are back at it again with another crazy video. And fam, I reacted to a video similar to this video, and a lot of people in the comment section. Well, I won't say a lot, but decent amount of people in the comment section was talking about, "Oh, this is cap. This is fake. This is this. This is that." But this right here, I just wish. I won't say I wish. Okay, I don't believe in wishes, but I pray that a lot of y'all really seek the lord jesus christ with all your heart you know what i'm saying i pray that y'all see the lord jesus christ with all your heart so this video right here we have a muslim who died goes to hell but then jesus saves him from islam to jesus christ okay now we're gonna go ahead and watch this video this is a seven minute video i'm gonna let the video play all the way out i'm gonna give my thoughts at the end of the video hit the like button subscribe to no post notifications follow your boy on all social media platforms down below without further ado let's go man I died when I was going to hell, when I was falling in the abyss. I was still even saying, there's no way, there's no way, Jesus, there's no way, how can it be? You know, I died. I must have had a heart attack in my sleep. And, you know, when I tell people this, they say, you sure it's not a dream? You sure it's not a dream? I go, listen, man, I'm 45 years old. I know what a dream is. And this is far from any dream you could ever think of. This was more real than me and you talking right now face to face. Because when you die... You feel everything a million times more enhanced than you feel now on earth. I felt mm -hmm. every single cell on my body, every single hair I can feel. I and, and you know everything. Your soul knows everything instantly. I knew everything. Boom. I knew I was going to hell when I died. I knew. I knew it. Right away, I screamed out the shahada, which in Islam we do. You know, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. And I screamed. The scream that I screamed, you know, I mean, I will blow the roof off my house. That's how the terrifying scream that you would not, that's how bad I screamed. And I screamed it and I screamed it. And I, then I said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, like eight times. And then right after that, I was wondering, you know, and I'm falling in this black abyss, falling so fast. And I'm wondering, am I going to get up? Am I waking up? Because, you know, sometimes when you have a dream, you're falling and you just pop up like that. That's what I was waiting for. And, I'm, and, and then it's not. I, I want to pause it right here. I don't know. Like, I, this is a quick thought. As I'm hearing him speak, I can literally visualize everything that he's saying. Like, visual, literally visualize it happening. I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I just want to throw that out there. I don't know if y'all are doing the same thing. I don't know if y'all can visualize it, but I, I don't know, man. I just want to throw that out there. Anyways, come on. Not, and then my soul's telling me, you're dead. You're dead. You're going to hell for eternity. My soul told me that it's not true. When I said Allahu Akbar and I was going, it said it's not, this is not true. You're going to hell for eternity. That's crazy. And when I felt the hopelessness when you know that you have God separated from you and you don't have God and, and there's no hope in your eternity. Like there's no hope. I mean, man, I will, I, I don't wish this on my worst enemy. This feeling of hopelessness is unbearable. I mean, the, the hopelessness you have on earth is nothing compared. Nothing comes close to it. Mm -hmm. I felt that hopelessness. And then there's this white light flying around me so fast. I knew it. My soul knew instantly it was my guardian angel. And this guardian angel, and I, this is the only way I can explain this in life. This angel's voice was the most scariest and the most beautiful voice in one. It was so piercing and it was so desperate for me. I felt the love of this angel was so desperate for me. It's like I knew he was with me my whole life, you know, trying to guide me, you know, trying to help me. His voice was unbearable, unbelievable. I can never get it out of my head. Every single day I can hear this voice and it was coming from this ear and this ear. Amir, Amir, please. It was begging me, please, you have to listen, hurry. Be he can still hear you. You have to tell him before your soul leaves your body. Tell Jesus to save you before your soul leaves your body. Hurry, please, do it now, do it now. And I'm looking down and I see another portal and that uh, the, a pit. And what? And I'm like, there's no way. There's no, what do you mean? What do you mean, Jesus? No way, what do you mean? What do you mean? What about Allah, what are, this and that? And I'm doing this. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, and then I said, right before, I said, please, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. In a big flash, in a big thunder, like a thunder, like a, a thunder a bolt like a sound and the force the when i came in back into my body the force my body came flew off my bed my i was sweating like water my wife got so terrified she was gonna call 911 she's like 
I was like, I'm going, oh my, babe, I had a heart attack. I died. You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. She's like, just go back to bed. Just go. It was like three something in the morning. It was late, you know? I didn't sleep. I go, oh my God, there's no way. There's no way this is happening. There's no way. And I still denied it. I go, there's no way. I go, I got to read the Quran again. I got to read the Quran. There's no way this can't be happening. Because, you know, a lot of times in Islam, they say the devil plays tricks on you and he comes and, you know, he'll come and uh, looking like a prophet or something, you know. You know, it's kind of ironic because in Galatians 1 7, when I read that, you know. Angel of Light. I cry. I cry on the way to work in the morning. I was crying my eyes off, man, crying. I couldn't believe it. So I started reading the Quran. I took my time, and this, and just to show that I'm not lying and making things up. I write. I write everything down. I have two journals. I write everything. Hmm. So I wrote surahs from the Quran that, that stuck out to me that I want you know. And I did the same for the Bible. I did them both, and I read them both. And I have two journals full. I, I write everything. Wow. Because I keep reading over them so I can memorize and I memorize and memorize. The more I'm reading, the stronger this angel's voice is in my ears. He He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can save you. Jesus, he's the only one that can save you every time. And then when I then when I read it, when I read about the crucifixion about Jesus, that's when it hit me because I read it before. And when I read it again this time, it was different. There's there's no way that God is going to make somebody look like Jesus and deceive trillion and zillions of souls because Islam and, and Christian and Jesus are six, over 600 years apart. So God Almighty took, he took six days to create everything, but it took him 600 years to create Islam and to say that Jesus wasn't crucified, you know, and that didn't set right with him. Because in Islam, you're not guaranteed paradise, no matter what you do. And, and then after this happened, when I was reading the Quran and stuff, my, I see, because I forget a lot of things and I'm coming back to it now. My wife calls me one day. This was three months after. And I didn't convert yet. It took me eight months to finally give in. That's how stubborn I was. That's how proud of a Muslim I was. I was even risking my soul and everything just because everything that he showed me and everything that he did, I still was denying. And and a lot, you know, I didn't want to hurt my family. Being raised for so many years and know and having this in your mind, it's programmed. You know, it's like programmed. It's hard. You know, my wife calls me and she was like, "Babe, do you have a minute?" I, she was driving to work. And I was like, uh, yeah, because I, I felt the urgency in her voice. I was like, she was like, I have to tell you before I forget again. Cool. She was like, some lady just cut me off and her her bumper sticker made me remember this dream that I had. My wife is still a Muslim, by the way. She had a dream that me and her, we got into an argument and I left the house. So she was doing the clothes and she was she was on the floor folding clothes and our door had mirrors on them. Our, our closet doors, they have long mirrors on them. So when she looked up, she got blinded. The light reflecting from the mirror blinded her. So she got scared and panicked. So she stood up and she said she stood up and she's so scared and she was frozen. She couldn't move and she felt some, somebody putting their hand on her right shoulder and instantly she felt peace. Peace. She said, who are you? Who are you? And he was like, she was like, how come I can't? How? She said to him, how come I can't see you? And he was like, you're not strong enough to see me. That's what he told my wife. And he and then she said, OK, well, where's Amir? Is Amir going to come back? And he told her, Amir is going to come back, but you got to bring him to me. Tell him Jeremiah 33, 3. And me, we, I never read the Bible. OK, never in my life. Me and my wife. Never. OK, never read the Bible. That's why. So my wife, when that lady cut her off, her bumper sticker says Jeremiah 333. 3, 3, and that's what that's how she remembered. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, babe, maybe it's just your, your, it happened because I keep on telling you about this angel's voice and what happened to me. And I'm so confused and this and that. So maybe it, that from that, she was like, I don't know, Ben. I don't know. You know, she's like, but it just came to me right now. I was like, okay, no problem. I Googled Jeremiah 333. 3, 3, 3, and it says, come to me and I will show you things that you will, that you do not know. Amazing things that you do. Not know. It's true. Honest God, man. Ever since I got saved, my, my vision is 360. <laughs> I see everything, everything, everything. Like when I pray for an answer, boom, it comes to me. Boom. And it, he shows me so many signs every time I doubt and stuff. And, and I don't deserve it. That's what, that's why I always question myself, like my sanity sometimes, because there's no way he's showing me all these things. It's, I, I, there's no way. Like I, I don't deserve it. Bro, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Fail. <laughs> Fail. Bro. <laughs> Yo. Bro, first off, I wanna I don't know that dude name. I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't know his name. But 
if this video happened to ever come across you, I just want to say, man, congratulations. You know what I'm saying? For truly giving your life and committing yourself to Jesus Christ. And I love the fact that he was honest. He said, look, I kept denying it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's a lot of things. I feel like that's going to be a lot of people that have these encounters with Jesus Christ. Atheists, Muslims, Buddhists, whatever. Whatever religion, whatever whatever you don't believe or whatever you believe, I feel a lot of people are going to have true encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're going to deny the evidence. See, a lot of us... I wouldn't say a lot of us, but a lot of atheists that be in my comment session, they always say that it's a it's a lack of evidence. There's no evidence. And I wonder if the evidence was proven to you, if Jesus Christ truly shows you miracles and every signs and wonders, which is all around you still. But if you truly look at the evidence, I wonder if you would deny the evidence that's being shown to you. Like, you can't ask for evidence and deny evidence. You know what I'm saying? And that's what a lot of atheists do. They ask they ask for the evidence, and then they still deny the evidence. You see? But this Muslim right here, bro, this was so powerful. And a lot of people not going to believe this. A lot of people going to say, oh, man, this was fake. This is this. Bro, people are not gaining anything by making up stories about how they went to hell or heaven. They're not gaining anything, bro. You Let me tell you something. Fam, since I started making videos about Jesus Christ, I done lost over almost two, three, maybe almost a thousand some subscribers. Okay, I went from 108,000 to 107,000 real fast in a, in, a, in a blink of an eye. I'm almost down to 106. So therefore, I'm telling you, you are not gaining anything from this. I do this because I want to show people the truth. I want to plant a seed in you. So that way that seed can eventually be water and eventually that seed can grow by God. You know what I'm saying? I don't do this for the money in the cloud. So things that I say, I always pray before I make any of these videos that it resonate with one of y'all. At least one of y'all. This guy ain't got nothing to lie about. He's not getting nothing from this. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of us, a lot of us will, this is what we would do because this is exactly how some people in the Bible acted. God will raise up prophets to warn people of what's to come if they don't turn away from their sin. What did these people do? They did not turn away from their sin because why would I listen to a mirror man like you? God didn't tell you that. You're a liar. You're this. You're that. So guess what? Once, once they realized that, oh, snap, this man was real. Th this man was actually telling us that God told us this. God's wrath came upon these people. God's wrath came upon these people. You know what I'm saying? And it and it's like people don't people they they going to continue to deny what God is literally putting right in front of your face. I mean, why is everybody becoming Christian? Ask yourself that. Why is everybody becoming a Christian? Is it really a delusional thing? I don't think so. It's not that many people that's that delusional. You know what I'm saying? And Christianity, you following Christ does not make you delusional at all. The Bible tells us that God uses I I, I want to I'm going to put the scripture on the on the screen. Because I don't want to, I want to say the scripture just as it is, but I don't know what to say just as it is. So it's on the screen right now, but it's in first Corinthians, you know what I'm saying? But God uses, I believe it was the foolish things, the foolish things of the world for people that's wise or something like that. It's something along them lines. Okay. But my, my thing, my thing that I'm trying to, or the point that I'm trying to make here is people need to not only just get right with God, but when God is showing you signs and wonders and miracles and all these different things, and he's raising up prophets, you need to honestly seek the Lord with all your heart. Seek the Lord with all your heart. You don't, you think everybody just becoming, uh, everybody just coming to Christ because, oh, they're delusional. Oh, they was raised in this. Oh, it's brainwashing. Oh, they this, oh, they that. No, it's something, it's so much power behind the name of Jesus, y'all. And if you honestly seen how much power is truly behind his name. If you honestly witness it, you will believe, okay? You will believe. But you know, back in Jesus' time, people, Jesus was doing literally miracles and wonders right in front of their face, and they still deny him as the son of God. So, I mean, I just feel like a lot of people are going to continue to be delusional because how can you see a man raising people from the dead, cast, uh, casting miracles and wonders on people, Healing the blind, the lame is walking, all these different things. The man done turned uh what a cup a couple of fishes to a to a bunch load of fishes. Like, I mean, seriously, like, how can you deny this man as the son of God? And so many people are blind to see the things that he did because oh, I wasn't there, so how do I know he did these things? You know he did these things because of the word of God. Oh, how's the word of God true? Look at just read it. Read it, read it with an open heart, and you will see how it's the truth. 
you will see how it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just want to say that, look, Muslims, atheists, Buddhists, Jehovah Witness, Catholics, whatever. I don't know. Okay, it's too many religions to even count. Jesus loves y'all. Okay? Jesus Christ truly loves y'all. And if y'all honestly just seek the Lord with all your heart, he will show up and show out. <laughs> he will show up and show out. You just got to be willing to, to approach him. You know what I'm saying? You got to be willing to draw near to him for the Bible says that if, he, if you draw near to him, he draw near to you. You got to be willing to make that first step. You are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Faith. You don't have, you're not saved by your good works. You're not saved because it is. He just literally said that Islam, you have no hope no matter what you do. So you're doing all these rituals, all these religious things in Islam, but you have no hope. As a believer in Christ, we have hope. We have hope. You just got to see it for yourself. That peace that he mentioned, when, so, when, that, when somebody touched his wife's shoulder, and she felt peace. That's that peace I've been talking about in the last couple of videos. A peace that sees all human understanding. We would never know that type. Of, we would never, even if when you feel that peace, you would never comprehend that peace. It's just you know that, like, man, I'm at peace. I'm going through this season. I'm broke. I'm this. I'm that. I'm at peace. Y'all got to get right with Jesus Christ, bro. Get right with Jesus Christ. He truly, I'm telling y'all, man, he loves y'all. Y'all got to be willing to just live and dedicate yourself to him. Dedicate yourself to him. Follow him. Stop following men. The man ideas of who Jesus is, don't follow that. Follow the, the original recipe of Jesus. When I say recipe, that means the word of God. Look at that word of God and look at who Jesus truly is in the word. Don't go based off, oh, this TikTok person said that Jesus was this. And that Instagram person said Jesus was this. Don't go off what men say. You got to read the word for yourself to truly gain that understanding. This is a personal relationship between you and God, not you and men. Think about that. But God loves y'all, man. Jesus Christ loves y'all. Give y'all life to Christ. I love each and every one of y'all, man. Shout out to this Muslim. I don't know his name, but shout out to him for truly giving his life to Christ, truly living and dedicating himself to Christ and following him after eight months. It don't matter how long, as long as that man followed him and not de and not and didn't keep denying the evidence that he uh, that was brought to him. You know what I'm saying? So I love y'all, man. <sighs> Jesus loves y'all. <laughs> Jesus loves y'all, brother. Uh, without further ado, man, it's been your boy, Japan. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.